Uh, look at that. Cable news in uh, full overdrive meltdown mode. Donald Trump on the move to that Miami courtroom tomorrow. He left New Jersey. He's in Miami right now to face this ludicrous case about the documents. Um, they're going to regret this. It's just making him stronger. And this case, I think it implicates the prosecutors. It implicates the Biden administration. They should not have brought this case. Um, and I know that because I followed the advice of the special counsel, a guy named Jack Smith. And Friday afternoon, he kind of gave me a homework assignment. This indictment was voted by a grand jury of citizens in the Southern District of Florida. And I invite everyone to read it in full, to understand the scope and the gravity of the crimes charged. And I did that. Very few people did that. You got to admit, not too many people did that. The legal analysts, they did it. They skimmed it. Uh, but you don't have to be a lawyer to look at this and know that it's a scam. Number one, in that indictment, they put some pictures in the indictment to scare us. Ooh, look at all these boxes. The classified documents in the boxes, these pictures are actually in the indictment. And there are dozens and dozens of boxes. So I went through the indictment and saw that how many documents, classified documents, did the FBI actually recover? 102, 102. So everybody, I got a box right here, all right? This is one box, one box. And inside I have 600 pages. That's 600 pages. From Staples, this is 500. And this, I opened another, this is about 100 right here. Can I see those pictures again? Why were they in the indictment? Why were they wall-to-wall -wall television? Why? Because they want to uh, put it in everybody's head, potential jurors' heads, that this stuff is full of classified material. It's not. One box? You can't, not even one box. That, I think, is kind of major. Maybe that's just me, but I saw something else in this indictment that really upsets me, and it should upset you. The lawyers, they got the lawyers to talk about private conversations with Trump. Attorney-client privilege, anyone? I mean, even the guy accused in Idaho, you know the guy who went into that sorority house allegedly? Yeah, he has attorney-client privilege. Uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, I believe, had attorney-client privilege. Uh, the Murdoff, you know that Murdoff guy in South Carolina? Everything he told his lawyer, we don't know that. One more, Charlie Manson had a lawyer and he could tell him anything. Isn't that basically understood in our system? Attorney-client privilege, not when it comes to Donald Trump. They come after his lawyers. Oh, boy, Rudy, poor Rudy Giuliani. Uh, his license has been suspended, not on the merits, just as political payback. How about Michael Cohen? I haven't heard anybody talk about, hey, attorney-client privilege. You were recording your own client. That is hideous. Well, in this indictment, there is Trump attorney number one, whoever that is, talking about all kinds of conversations with uh, Donald Trump, his client, Trump attorney one, reminded Trump that attorney one was going to review the boxes. Next, after Trump attorney one confirmed that he was finished with his search of the storage room, Trump asked, did you find anything? Is it bad? Is it good? Now, <laughs> this has got to be coming from the attorney, right? And that's totally unfair. That's totally un-American. And as a client, he has some questions for his attorney. I don't want anybody looking. I don't want anybody looking through my boxes. I really don't. I don't want you looking through my boxes. You know what? I don't want anybody looking through my boxes, through my stuff. I think I'm allowed to tell my attorney that, and so is he. Nobody wants this, and you're allowed to say things like this. You're allowed to say out loud, well, what if we, what happens if we just don't respond at all or just don't play ball with them? These are things, you know, it would be one thing if Donald Trump was about to kill somebody, right? And the lawyer called the police. But to force a lawyer to come forward and about these kinds of conversations, where is the box, when is the box, that's hideous. And everybody should know that. And this, wouldn't it be better if we just told them we don't have anything? And well, look, isn't it better if there are no documents? You're allowed to ask your lawyers questions, right? And oh, by the way, if this is, this is a lawyer's recollection, uh, but it goes back to what Judge Jackson said about all this stuff. The decision to segregate personal materials from presidential records is made by the president during the president's term and in his sole discretion. I think that goes all the way back to the Clinton administration. So if we don't have anything here, 
have anything that you're privy to as the National Archives. Anyway, they're bullying this guy and they're counting on the ignorance of the American people. They're trying to fool us with this classified document talk. It must be serious, right? It's classified after all. The single most important piece of evidence in this case is that audio tape. The most damning piece of evidence to me is the audio tape. I think the most damning piece of evidence in the entire case, and I think brings it from a strong case to a very strong case, is the audio tape. <laughs> they really are fools and liars. I got to tell you, because the audio tape, if it does exist, um, well, presidents have discussed classified information with journalists and with political allies before. It happens. So Apparently, this comes down to Iran. Uh, the, the president may have shared information, or at least that we have a plan to attack Iran. Is said to have described a potentially classified document where we attack Iran. Uh, I would be shocked if we did not have a plan to attack Iran. So apparently, General Milley was going around telling everybody Trump was so crazy he wanted to attack Iran. Uh, Trump was pointing out they're the ones who actually came up with the plan. So the plan exists. Is it really that much of a shocker that a president of the United States would be discussing this with a journalist or with a political ally? No. Presidents do this all the time. Uh, these guys, the presidential bros, I like to say, <laughs> they shared classified information all the time with people who were not supposed to see it, namely fake news reporters. At least they weren't authorized to see it. They had no background check. They had no access, classification. They had no, anyway, happens all the time. New York Times, 2006, Bush advisor's memo cites doubts about Iraqi leader. A classified memorandum by President Bush's national security advisor expressed serious doubts about whether Prime Minister Nuri Kamala Maliki had the capacity to control the sectarian violence in Iraq. The November 8th memo was prepared for Mr. Bush and his top deputies by Stephen Hadley, the national security advisor. An administration official made a copy of the document available to a New York Times reporter seeking information on the administration's policy review. The Times read and transcribed the memo. Huh. Democrat lodges complaints over leaks from Bush camp. In two stinging letters to the Central Intelligence Agency, a lot here, uh, Senator Rockefeller, the West Virginia Democrat, chair of the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, complained that the administration had provided a torrent of classified information to journalist Bob Woodward of The Washington Post for his 2002 book, Bush at War. In his letter in March to the agency's director, George Tenet, Mr. Rockefeller argued that senior administration officials appear to have engaged in a brazen effort to exploit highly classified information for partisan purposes. He added that the disclosures of so much information for Mr. Woodward's book send a message, whether in the White House or elsewhere in the government, that leaks of classified information receive blessings from the very top. In the book, Mr. Woodward wrote that he had been given access to contemporaneous notes, which are classified, taken during more than 50 National Security Council and other meetings. This is routine, folks. How about this one? For president, first a leak, now a jam. That President Bush authorized an aid to disclose classified intelligence on Iraqi weapons, as asserted in court papers, comes as no shock to official Washington. The leaking of secrets has long been a favored tool of policy debate, political combat, and diplomatic one-upsmanship. We've had leaking of this kind since the administration of George Washington, said Rick Shankman, a presidential historian for George Mason University. Without the use of secrets, Mr. Frankel argued at the time, there could be no adequate diplomatic, military, and political reporting of the kind our people take for granted. Also, sometimes presidents say secret stuff out loud to millions of people. There have also been cases in which presidents, in the heat of the moment, have spontaneously revealed secrets. During the 1964 presidential campaign, under attack by Barry Goldwater, the Republican nominee, uh, as soft on defense, President Lyndon Johnson chose to reveal the existence of a highly classified experimental reconnaissance aircraft, the SR-71 Blackbird. And it goes on and on like this. Rumsfeld did it. Rumsfeld, two days before he left, he submitted a classified memo that everybody saw that acknowledged that the Bush administration strategy in Iraq was not working and called for a major course correction. The memo's discussion of possible troop reduction. It also puts on the table several ideas for troop redeployments or withdrawals. This is specific stuff. Told that the New York Times had obtained a copy of it, a Pentagon spokesman, Eric Ruff, confirmed 
It's authenticity. This is how it goes in the swamp. Except when it's Donald Trump. Everybody else they protect. Hillary Clinton. Oh, boy, did they protect her. I mean, her emails. Oh, by the way, according to Jim Comey, there is a very good chance they made it into the hands of our enemies. Yes, of our adversaries. He said it out loud. Now, the indictment only alleges that some author saw that memo, maybe, and some political ally, not an adversary, but an ally. Anyway, there's classified material, and then there's classified material. The swamp, they have all kinds of customs that serve them. Barack Obama, April 2016. Here's what I know. Hillary Clinton was an outstanding Secretary of State. She would never intentionally put uh, America in any kind of jeopardy. And what I also know, because I handle a lot of classified information, uh, is that there are, there's classified and then there's classified. There's stuff that is really top secret, top secret, and there's stuff that is being presented to the President or the Secretary of State that you might not want uh, on the transom uh, or you know, going out over the wire, but is basically stuff that you could get in open source. But open source. You can Google it. So there's classified and then there's classified. So what did Donald Trump have? Was it classified or was it classified? Uh, it's a game they're playing. Uh, notice they only impose the rules. They only want to catch Trump. Joe Biden? Does anybody remember this? This is how we found out about the Corvette, oh, by the way. A chance to speak on all this, God willing, soon. But as I said earlier this week, people, and by the way, my Corvette's in a locked garage. Okay, so it's not like you're sitting out in the street. So the but anyway, was in a garage. yes, as well as my Corvette. The secret documents that he had no, there's no right whatsoever. He never should have had him at the house. Never, ever. President Trump is a former president of the United States. It's a, to, it's a world apart from the, uh, Joe Biden's status. And oh, by the way, this is important. January 20th, 2021. Donald Trump leaves the White House, okay? Remember this. He leaves in the morning. He doesn't go to the inauguration. Uh, the documents leave the White House as well that morning. He's still president of the United States. He arrives in Palm Beach at what time? About 11 in the morning. He's still president of the United States. He goes to Mar-a-Lago. What time is it by the time he gets to Mar-a-Lago? 11.32 in the morning. All these documents, they're with him. He's president. He has access to everything that exists no problem whatsoever. When did Joe Biden actually become president? Uh, he jumped the gun, 1147 in the morning. And um, look, they're playing a game on the American people. They are. They're playing a game with us. And they want you and me to be intimidated by this whole classified documents thing. 